Hi guys, I'm Anissa and I'm back with another video and today it's time for finally filming my March wrap up. I have been wanting to do this every weekend since I started. We've started in on April, but I've had super busy weekends and the weekdays, even though it's actually uh, still light out when I get home, I've been so tired and um, had a difficult time actually uh, thinking a lot and I don't think I would have made a very con a very good video. I don't know how this is going to turn out either, but hopefully it will be a lot better than it would have been in the past months, the <laughs> past few days or weeks. Um, but yeah, let's get into the overall statistics for March and get started with my wrap up. Better late than never, I always say. First things first, I managed to finish a total of 16 books in March. I also DNF'd two books. And this means I read a total of 4,912 pages um, and it will be, have been, and it is 5,289 pages, including those DNF page, pages. And this leaves an average uh, page book length uh, of 307 pages. In terms of genres, surprisingly, this in March, I read four contemporaries, own two fantasy books, two thriller books, two urban fantasies, one science fiction, one historical, one magical realism, one non-fiction book, and two mysteries. There's a lot of different genres this month, but I'm most surprised about the fact that the really low amount of fantasy books I got through this last month. In terms of formatting, I, 10 of the books that I read were audios. One was a hardcover book, one was a trade paperback. No, two were trade paperbacks, one was an ebook, and two were graphic novels. Or manga. In terms of page length, I read 12 novels, I read one novelette, I read two graphic traits, and I read one short story collection. In terms of age group, I read 12 books that were adult, three books were middle grade, one was a kid's book, and then I read zero young adult books. The shortest book that I read this month was Aquacorn Co by Katie O'Neill. This is a graphic novel, but it's only 96 pages. And the longest book that I finished was Different Seasons by Stephen King. This is a short story collection as well, but it is comes at 560 pages. In terms of the year that this were public, these were published, one of them was published in the 80s, uh, five of them were published in the 2000s, early 2000s, and two of them were published in 2015. I read two books from 2016. I read one book from 2017, and then I read five books from 2018. So the majority was from last year. And in terms of page length, two books were under 100 pages. Uh, one book was between 100 and 199 pages. I read four books between 200 and 299 pages. Then I read eight books between 300 and 399 pages. And then I read one book between 500 and 599 pages. In terms of my series tracking, uh, I read seven standalone books. I read nine books that were part of a series. And out of those nine books, four of them were new to was new to me series, which is not super great. Four of them were next series next books, and then I finished one book, one series. In terms of my star rating, I had a pretty good reading month concerning um, how much I enjoyed them. I rated, I didn't rate anything below four stars, except that if I had finished those DNFs, I probably would have given those two or one star. But but in terms of star rating, I read. Four of the books that I read were three stars, one was a three and a half stars, no, six of them were four stars, uh, two of them were four and a half stars, and then I read five, three books that were five stars, and I find that to be a really exciting thing, and it's, it leaves an average of 3.97 stars. So now let's get into the actual books. I'll start out by talking about those two books that I DNF'd. Um, the first thing I DNF'd was Horns by Joe Hill. I tried this. And I was actually halfway through on page 199 when I decided to stop this. It was just really, really super weird. And the language was unnecessarily rough. I mean, I'm used to reading sort of um, bad language from some of the Stephen King's books. He, Stephen King can be a little bit crude sometimes in his language. I think Stephen King has a, a similar 
style sometimes, but I don't think it's as bad as this was. And I didn't, I know that this was supposed to be about how he was sort of turning into a devil and all of these people had all of these horrible thoughts about the people around them and they said whatever they, the, 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 they thought, like the most horrendous thought about some, it would be t told. And it was just not working for me and I ended up DNFing it and I probably would have rated it two and a half stars to a two star if I had finished it, I don't know. Um, but it was just not super engaging to me. The other book that I also DNF'd was uh, The Glass Castle. Or was it The Glass House? No, The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. This is a non-fiction book and it talks about... And I'm a little bad, I feel a little bad about reading on DNF in a book like this. Um, but I just was so infuriating with everything that I read in this one. And I just... I just really didn't like this book and I hated every moment that I was reading it because there were so many things that I hated that happened to this person. And so I ended up DNFing it because I just couldn't handle it anymore. And I don't know how, what I would have rated it, but I, that's my reason for DNFing it. And I was 65% through it. So I did give bo both books a real chance this time before I decided to DNF it. I shouldn't have to apologize for DNFing a book, but yeah, those are my reasons for doing it. Um, the first thing that I finished in in March was It Happened One Autumn by Lisa Klebers. This is the second book in the Wallflower series and this series follows um, different protagonists and it is a series where you follow um, these girls who are considered wallflowers at balls. Like they're, they're getting a little older and closer to the time they can't go to these balls anymore and they still haven't found a suitable husband. And so they're sort of making a pact within this group to help each other um, find a suitable husband so that they can carry on their line or whatever. It's like aristocratic England in the Regency era, I guess. And yeah, I love this one. I thought that the main character was so witty and so amazing and so her own person and didn't care about what people thought about her. And I love that about her. And I really like the male protagonist as well. And so this ended up being a really, really good story. And I, there was a point in time in this book where I was thinking, how could this not stop now? Because I feel like it was getting to an end of the story. But there was still like, I still had like an hour or something or an hour and a half left of the book. And I was like, what is going to be happening in this next hour and a half? Is it just going to be really boring? And I was like, what could happen in the next three hours? And I was actually surprised at what ended up happening. And and it really defined the book for me. So I ended up giving it four and a half stars. I really enjoyed the sequel. And it was a, I enjoyed the main character of this a lot more than the first one. And I still really enjoyed the first one as well. So I highly recommend this series so far. And I had really fun. A really fun time reading this one. I read the first book from a translatorthon because I was listening to a Danish translation of this and she did a really good job I think. Um, and the next thing that I finished was um, And Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Backman. This is a short little novelette story and it is about it's just really heartwarming and it's about this little boy and his granddad and his granddad has Alzheimer's um, or dementia and he's starting to forgetting things and trying to really hold on and stick to what he remembers and has a really difficult time about it and knows that he's forgetting things. And then you see this from the the, the child's perspective as he's trying to understand what is going on with his granddad, but still trying to, um, yeah, get some really great moments with his granddad. And they're just sitting on the, at this specific bench talking back and forth about different things. And... Yeah, I just absolutely loved this one. It was sad and heartwarming and beautiful and all the things at the same time. And I definitely understand why everyone that I've heard of talking about this really loved it. And I gave it five out of five stars and I cried a lot towards the end. So, and I don't do that very often. So that says a lot about a book. And yeah, five stars for that one. And this was a library, so I had to hand it back in at the library. The next thing that I finished was another library, and that was Full Metal Alchemist Volume 8 by Hiromu Arakawa. This is, as I said, said before, this is my favorite manga series so far. I haven't read very many different ones, but this is my favorite so far. Um, and this was just so much fun. I can't talk much about the, what was going on because, like, spoilers. Um, but 
I just had some really, really good moments with Al in this one. He's like my favorite person, like favorite character in the series. And he just, he doesn't deserve every, all the people around him because he's such a general soul and I love him to bits. And I give this one five out of five stars. So two five stars in a row, that was really good. <laughs> a good, a good readathon for me, um, the translatorthon. The next thing that I finished was A Second Chance Pass by uh, Robin Carr. This is the book, fifth book in the Virgin River series. And the Virgin River series, series follows usually one new couple and then it dips back into all of the other couple's stories that were from previous books. One of the things that I didn't super enjoy in this one was that it has, um, it has less and less time to build the characters that we meet now. And in this one, we had three roman new romances as well as we dipped into all of the other romances. And I'd much rather have focused on one new romance and maybe dip into one of the other uh, romantic couples. Um, because I do like the fact that we get to see things from other couples, but it's always the same couple that gets the most attention, which I find a little bit sad because they're my least favorite people. And it, there's always so much drama with those two people. And it's Mel and... What, what is the guy's name? Jacks, I think uh, Mel and Jack are like the main focus in all of the books. I feel like even though they're new couples, and it's all the drama always happens to them, and it's just like a little far fetched to me. But nonetheless, I enjoyed my time reading this, and I I still enjoyed it more than the previous Virgin River book, which was Ro Virgin River Christmas. So I give it a four out of five stars. So yeah, it was highly entertaining, uh, but I think that. A lot of things could have done been done better and yeah but i liked it the next thing that i finished was city of ghosts by v e schwab this is my first my a book to sff award pick that i that i've listened to um in march and it was a really short urban fantasy middle grade book and it follows a girl who moves to scotland i feel like it was scotland and it's sort of like a ghost hunter type of story. I've heard people talk about this like Buffy the Vampire Slayer but in a middle grade setting. No, no, no. That is not the case. I feel like it's more like Ghost Whisperer right vibe. I can't say that. <laughs> um, but like she's talking to ghosts and trying to send them on, on or that is the main job as this person and so that vibe fits better with the description I think. But I enjoyed it. It's not my favorite V.E. Schwab is definitely not my least favorite. So yeah, I'm giving it a three and a half stars. I enjoyed it and I definitely recommend it if you are into these ghost type of stories. Um, I think you would really enjoy it. The next thing that I finished was another Booktube SFF Awards and that is The Arusha and the End of Time by uh, Roshana Chakshi. This is one of those books from Rick Ryden Presents lines and it follows Arusha who is a Pandava. I think that's what it's called and she is this means that she's so, sort of um, a goddess and she um, doesn't know this when you get just thrown into it you figure out that she is like she lives at a museum with her mom and she's trying to make people like her by telling little white lies and she one day when she's trying to convince people that she should they should like like her and be friends with her she um, does something that her mother has always told her not to do. She touches an old lamp from the museum and she ends up freezing everything in time and sets off this book. And she finds out that she's this Pandava girl and the only other person that is also not frozen in time is Min Mini? Mimi, who is another Pandava and they have to try and um, solve this mystery thing and uh, save the world basically so that it gets back to its normal um, and yeah, I thought it was a really fun book. It's definitely very Rick Riordan-esque. I think I think that uh, you would tell that <laughs> it is in the same style that Rick Riordan writes in. Like the humor is pretty similar. So I think if you like Rick Riordan's books, you're really going to be liking this one. Um, and I ended up really enjoying it and giving it four out of five stars. So I definitely recommend it if you like Rick Riordan's books or if you just think that you would like to check out a new sort of fun middle grade book with some really good representation um, because it's obviously following Hindu mythology 
and following an Indian character. The next thing that I finished was Murder on Washington Square. This is this fourth book, fourth book in um, the Gaslight mystery series, and this is a mystery series that's set in the late 1800s, following widower Sarah Brandt and um, also um, Detective Sergeant Frank Malloy from the New York Police Department. And I love, I really enjoy these books. I think that they have a lot going for them. The mysteries are always fun to follow, and you never really. I mean, I have once I guessed a little bit about what was going to end up um, happening, um, but other than that, I haven't always been really. It hasn't been really easy to figure out what the mystery would end up, where the mystery would end up. Um, but my favorite parts is the sort of bickering and <laughs> and back and forth between Sarah and Frank. They have such a fun relationship. It's still really, it's still pretty platonic, but like things happen, like they get to know each, each other more and more, but they have so many grudges towards each other in their professions because of things that's happened previously, but they do respect each other and they have some, they do things for each other without the other one knowing. And I find that really interesting. And I'm really looking forward to see how that relationship is going to develop in the future. And I give this one four out of five stars. The next thing that I finished was Different Seasons by Stephen King. This is a short story collection and it has like a story for each season. So it has like a spring so story, a summer story, a winter story and a fall and autumn story. And the first story is Shawshank Redemption. And this is going to, I, this is one of my absolute favorite Stephen King stories so far. And I loved it to bits. And I think that the movie does the book justice, but this story is just so well told and the narrator does a really good job narrating it because it sounds like you're listening to Morgan Freeman telling the story of the Shawshank Redemption or Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption is the actual title. I love this book and it's so hopeful and it's so different than what you're used to read from Stephen King's. but. It has a really hopeful message and um, there's some scary people in this obviously because it's Stephen King but he's so good at writing characters and this one shows that Stephen King is good at writing stuff that's not horror. This is n has nothing to do with horror and that's actually a theme during this, during this collection is that all these stories they are not horror stories. There are maybe they have no supernatural element to any of the stories whatsoever, but they may have horrific events because like one of them is focusing a lot about, is about a Nazi German um, veteran that lives in the US undercover thing. And then there's another one about a train and, and a dead body. And like there's a lot of different type of stories in this one and I and I enjoyed all of the stories. I think my least favorite was actually Ad Purple, the one with the Nazi Germany German um person. Um that was not my favorite. But I, I guess I would understand if people really enjoy it because I think it was so well told, it was just not my type of story. And the other two stories I gave four and four and a half stars and Shawshank's Redemption was a five stars for me. So I ended up giving this collection four and a half stars because I ended up really, really enjoying this book. And will definitely recommend it if you think that Stephen King is only a horror writer. I think you should check this collection out and see for yourself if Stephen King can write something that you are interested in. Because this has nothing to do with general horror as we know it. it it's more like... Maybe they have a few suspenseful moments, but I think this really shows his um, amazing storytelling ways um, that he can do with just human characters, and I loved it. The next thing that I finished was On What Grounds by Cleo Coyle. Now we're getting into the um, buzzword part, but um, this is the first book in the book series, Coastal Mystery series called The Coffee House Mystery, and it follows a um, woman who has a daughter who is 17 years old and she owns this coffee shop, part owner of a coffee shop, and she's divorced from her husband. And in the beginning of this book, we, this, she finds out that her employee is in a coma after having fallen down the stairs in the coffee shop. 
and what seems to maybe have been an accident or but she's pretty certain that someone pushed her because she's a what she's a really graceful person or she is a really graceful person so she knew that she was not likely to just fall down the stairs like um so she's definitely in detective mode and trying to figure things out for herself because the detectives doesn't necessarily think that there's anything happened here um so yeah this was really funny i thought the the mixture of the cozy like i love cozies because they have the mystery but they also have the funny cozy feeling that it's not too it's not difficult to read it's kind of fun and you're heartwarming at places and you really get a sense of in this one family dynamics it, it does a lot of because you have to hear this thing with her ex-husband and her daughter and you have these family ties in that way and i just really enjoyed it and i ended up giving it and i ended up giving it four out of five stars and i'm definitely interested in continuing with this series in the future and the narration of the audio was pretty good as well and it kept me uh, very interested i think this has about 15 books in this series or something so and it's still they're still writing in it i think it's still ongoing so yeah um highly recommend it if you would like to check out Co cozy mysteries um yeah the next thing that I finished was Aquacon Co. by Katie O'Neill. This is a children's graphic novel and it's nom nominated in the Booktube SFF Awards under Graphic Works. And it f is about this young girl who has grown up. Um, she, When she was a baby, she was living by the sea with her mom and her dad. But when her mother passed away, her dad was really left heartbroken and he wanted to escape from this place. So he's been living on mainland stuff and but she had the, the main character here has always been re has been really sad about that and just wants to get back to the ocean so at one point her dad decides that it's okay that they should go and visit her her aunt or her mother's sister um and she finds this little aquacorn in that is has um been injured and she takes it in for care ring and it talks a lot about environment and how you could you should protect the ocean and the coral reefs and so it has a lot of good messages and the art stuff is really simple um i feel like and it doesn't have a lot of text sometimes it's just a lot of images um so it's a really quick read um but i definitely i definitely enjoyed it I didn't love it, but I enjoyed it and I gave it four out of five stars. The next thing that I finished was Why Not Me by Mindy Kaling. This is a um, memoir by Mindy Kaling. I didn't know who Mindy Kaling was when I went into this and I'm, I had no idea. And I just read it because I'd heard about it and it had Y in the title and was short. And those were the three criteria when I picked this book. Overall, I liked this. But I didn't have any personal connection to it. I thought that the the Mindy Kaling had some interesting points and some inter interesting messages. But overall, it was not something I really super enjoyed. Looked forward to picking up again. It was just like, nah, yeah, I'm I'm cooking. I can make I can listen to a little bit of this while I cook, and that was basically what I did. And I ended up giving it three out of five stars. The next book that I finished was How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. This was a little bit of a disappointment to me. Um, I had really high hopes for this. This is a time travel book and I've heard excellent things about Matt Haig. I don't know what it was about this one, but it was a little... It, it never really ca captured my attention completely. And I don't know if it was the writing or if it what it was, but... Um, I ended up only giving this a 3 out of 5 stars because it just didn't... It, I didn't connect as much to it as I wanted to and I was really looking forward to reading this. So, yeah. But three out of five stars is still not a bad rating. It was just not exactly what I was expecting. The next book I finished was my favorite read of the month, and it was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Yes, I am on the bandwagon of absolutely loving this book. I feel like everyone loves this, like everyone, and I'm no different. I was afraid when I went into this that I wouldn't like it and I'd have to give a bad review because everyone seems to love it and I didn't want I, I I don't like it when I'm not on the same bandwagon um but but it happens a lot but with this one I really enjoyed it I really really 
really enjoyed it. I thought it was structured in a really interesting way. But if you don't know, this is told from... This follows a young girl who is um, in the beginning career of her uh, journalist writing um, career. Um, and she is offered a job to um, follow, uh, to meet up with um, Evelyn Hugo, who is like a Hollywood phenomenon. Phenomen yeah, phenomenon. <laughs> like, she's like this book's version of Marilyn Monroe, pr probably. I don't know. Uh, I guess that's what you would consider. She's a fictional character, though. But yeah. Uh, so she's offered to interview this girl, woman, who is um, getting pretty old at this point. Um, but she's doing some. She's allowed to interview her about some dresses and stuff. Um, and Evelyn Hugo has um, asked for her personally to do this. She doesn't want anyone else. So this is the person that's going to be doing it. And she comes in and she finds out that everything isn't as it seems. And it's actually about Evelyn Hugo wanting to tell her complete life story to her. And she has to write her memoir when she's gone. So she has to write this. And uh, because she really liked the way that she's been writing her um, blog posts and stuff and um, columns in the different newspaper magazines that she's done. And so she just wants her to write her memoir. And so it's a story about Evelyn Hugo telling herself, telling story about everything from her childhood to her through her professional career until where she is now. And it's just told in a really really great way where you dip in and out of this um, past and the present and and it's just it's dual narration of the audio the audio was amazing it when you you know when you're listening to real time you're hearing things from um i forgot the main main character's name because it's like evelyn hugo is like the most important person in this one um but like you could hear it when it was um her or it was Evelyn talking and when it was in the in Evelyn's um telling her story it was like if you were like in the past and just following the characters and I just loved it and some of the characters you meet in this one are just gonna gonna yeah it, it really warmed my heart with some of the characters and some of the moments were destroying me and the the romances I mean, I should have done a review of this like immediately after finishing it because I'm so terrible with remembering names. But the romances in this one were ama was amazingly written. I loved Max, one of the main was one of the side characters, and I loved. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed Evelyn. I thought she was a really really great character, and just oh, I just love this book. I can't really f my my mind is a jumbled mess, and I ended up. <laughs> crying again like two books this month made me last month made me cry and that never happens as i say and the last 45 minutes of the audio really got to me um and yeah i just and there were some big revelations towards the end that i also hadn't completely seen coming and i just can't wait to read more from um taylor jenkins read i I know she, I have access to like four more books from my storytell already and I'm gonna read them sooner rather than later because right now I'm just on a on a high with her and yeah five out of five stars definitely worth the hype um the next thing that I finished was Fire and You by jo Jennifer L. Armentrout the sixth and last and final book in the Wait For You series this series as multiple other contemporary romances series is follows a uh, different couples with each book and this one is no different we follow a new character but this one i didn't know any of the characters beforehand because apparently these characters were met in like in between novellas so i didn't know any of the characters and i didn't have any um oh this is that person from the the third book or something like that that i've had with all of the other books but nonetheless it's not difficult to get into these you just start to getting to know these characters as, as you go and it's a romance it's about this girl who um has a, a childhood crush on this boy and he becomes a boss and they form a relationship 
and her and it sort of has some sports elements as well um this was not my favorite book by any means in this series i think it had a lot of some flaws but i also had other moments where i really enjoyed it but these two characters were definitely not my favorites i ended up giving this four out of five stars but i think the if out of this series book three and four were my favorite two favorite series books i think book three was actually my favorite of all of them um yeah but i definitely still really enjoyed the majority of these books and i I gave the first four books five stars, and I gave this uh, f fifth book four and a half stars, and this one four stars. So this was my least favorite of the books, but that doesn't mean I didn't like it. So yeah. The next thing that I finished was The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. This I listened to in audio. This was my book that I started but not finished, and I basically just started from where I left off because I could remember what had happened beforehand. And this is about this... Um, woman she was going to like she was a reporter for a news, news a paper magazine a magazine in england and she was going on this cruise with um in norway like the northern part of norway like around svalbard and stuff and um she was going there to do some research for her paper like she was digging for dirt between like these rich people and she goes to this cruise finding out that um, someone is missing. Oh, she she sees a girl that's supposed to not be there and She thinks that she witnesses something happening and it's not sh and but and when she tells people about it They think that she's a bit stupid and all of that. It's Yeah, um, Ruth Ware is a really well-known author on Everywhere like everyone seems to have read something from her um, This uh, was a mediocre thriller for me. I th thought parts of it that was um, good and I was very immersed in the story and I and other parts I just absolutely hated the main character and thought she did some stupid stupid things and I was like wow you're really like seriously you're gonna do that right now <laughs> sort of that reaction and so I ended up giving it three out of five stars, but I am interested in reading something else by her because I think that her writing is pretty compelling. And so giving her another shot, I think, but it might be um, like one of her later novels because I feel like it might, she might have um, developed her writing skills or something since this. I think, was this her, her, her debut? Uh, it's definitely one of her earlier novels. This is actually also a TBR unwrapping. So the last and final thing that I read in March was another Booktube SFF Awards book. And that was Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Ronhaus. This is the a first book in a series. I think it's going to be a trilogy. And it's an urban fantasy series following these um, Native American uh, protagon people. And it's set in a post-apocalyptic time after some there's been a lot of floods that happened in and it's changed um the earth how we know it um and this main character is a monster slayer and for that reason i thought i was going to really love this one but i just found myself not super connected to the characters and not super into the plot of this um and some of the characters were just a little bit bland um but the ending had me intrigued, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be picking up the next book. I'll have to think on that, uh, but I ended up giving this specific book 3 out of 5 stars. So not my favorite read at all for the month. So those were all of the books that I finished in March. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I've been talking about today and what were your thoughts on them. Definitely let me know. And also let me know if you're planning on picking any of the books up that I've talked about today after what I have been saying about them and finally what did you read in March that what was your favorite read and is there any of the March reads that you read that you want to recommend to me definitely let me know about that as well and if you like the video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video very, very soon goodbye